All right, what's up, everybody? Our Sunday tradition, driving to the mall pissed off after the Saints lose again. Got Drew in the car with me. Hey, what do we say when the Saints are playing? Who dat? Who dat? Um, we do say who dat. Unfortunately, the answer to the question is literally everybody the Saints play now. That's how bad this team is. Um, last week, I was super pissed. Um, I'm not that now because eventually you get to a point where the anger kind of subsides. It's like, what is it? The, the stages of grief, um, the anger subsides, reality sets in that this is what it is. And now it's all about carving your path forward. Um, however that's going to look. Look, this game is is what it is, right? I mean, um, I wish I could set that thing down. Oh, well. Um, look, this game is what it is. Um, Detroit gets the ball. They go right up your ass. They're up 7 nothing. You get the ball. First offensive play. You throw an interception. They're up 14 nothing. You go three and out. They get the ball back. Three plays later, they score. You are lifeless. You have completely quit on your team, your coach. Uh, that first quarter, the Saints weren't even attempting to tackle. The effort was so bad. The penalties, uh, the procedure penalties, it was just a mess. Um... And I tweeted, the Saints have quit on Dennis Allen, fire him on Monday. And you're at that point. Uh, I'll, I'll tip my cap for the rally. Um, you finally get a, you get a touchdown in the first half, and it's Jimmy Graham. It takes, it takes you being the worst team in the NFL in the red zone by an historically large margin. And then having so many injuries among your pass catchers to activate Jimmy Graham, who you brought out of retirement, who is one of the greatest red zone mismatches we've ever seen. I don't want to say in NFL history, but in the modern era and in the last 20 years, Jimmy Graham is one of the greatest red zone mismatches we've ever seen. And this Saints team is sucks so hard in the red zone, yet Jimmy Graham is never active. He's active because of injuries, and he scores. Jimmy Graham has three targets on the season. Three targets, two touchdowns. <laughs> I mean, like, how are you even pissed about it anymore? It's just what it is, so you just move on, right? You just laugh at it. So anyway, you're down 24-7 to at the half, and I'll give the Saints credit. They put together a couple of touchdown drives. They got it within three. And, man, Detroit went right down the field. They got inside the 10, and you held them to a field goal. I mean, it was – you gave yourself a shot. And you're feeling good because you've scored on back-to-back -back drives and then Derek Carr fumbles when James Hurst hits him as, as a pull. And I'm going to tell you this. Go back and watch the play. That's on Derek Carr. I know Hurst pulled and hit the ball. But Carr, Carr continued the action as if he still had the ball. It's like, brother, you were the one holding it. You know you're not holding the ball anymore. Get your ass back and recover the football. What are you doing? Uh, so anyway, for all intents and purposes, the game ended there. Um, Jamison Williams, Superman's into the end zone, and uh, that was that. I know the Saints got to stop or scored again, and uh, we can talk about Derek Carr being hurt. But listen, the reality is there's two things that need to happen. You got to fire Dennis Allen tomorrow. And you got to bench Derek Carr. And again, I know we talked about this with the Minnesota game when Carr was hurt. They brought in Winston. And um, Winston led a couple of touchdown drives and all that stuff. Um, and I'll say it again. I, I don't wish ill upon Derek Carr. Seems like a great man, person, husband, father, all the stuff that matters. And I don't want him to be hurt. And if this is another concussion in a month, now we're talking about the same thing we were talking about with Tua a year ago, where you legitimately start to say, hey man, are the concussions 
getting out of control because once you've had concussions, it's easier to have them again. So most importantly, I hope Derek Carr is okay, sincerely. Strictly from a football standpoint, injury or not, you have to fire Dennis Allen tomorrow and you have to bench Derek Carr. I don't believe Jameis Winston is this team's future. We've, we've walked down this road, and you just saw it there again. I mean, Jameis gets a ball that should have been pick six. It deflects, and it ends up being a completion to Alave. And then down the stretch, he had Alave wide open. He went wide, and then he had him open in the flat on fourth down or on the sideline on fourth down, and he went inside of him when he needed to go out. Jameis just isn't – he's not it, man. He's just not it. Like, I was one of those ones that wanted – thought it made sense, right? It made sense – when they went and got Jameis for all the reasons we talked about. I mean, I was literally the first person around here to put out content to say, go sign Jameis Winston whenever he was being let go by Tampa. And it made sense. You know, guy in his prime, physically great, was with a bad organization, let him sit behind Breeze, learn from Breeze, have Sean Payton. I mean, there was a lot of things that made sense. And it's just, they've they walked down the road. He ain't it. He'll, he'll be a backup quarterback the rest of his career. Maybe there's times where he might get a chance to start somewhere. I mean, Trevor Simeon's playing right now for the Jets, but whatever. Like, I mean, it's what it is. But you you but at this point, what you know is you made an investment into Derek Carr that you were never going to get a return on. And listen, I could victory lap it and tell you all that I hated it at the time. And I did hate it at the time. And you all all know that. And it was a terrible decision to make to pay that man that money. And you're you know, financially obligated to Derek Carr for three seasons. You can off-ramp off that contract in 2026. But, you know, you've you got to play Jameis the rest of the season. Understand that you... You made a bad decision and wasted a lot of money in signing Derek Carr. So, fire Dennis Allen because he's culpable. Mickey Loomis is too, and you're going to have to fire him. I don't know if Gail Benson will, but she needs to. You need new leadership in this organization. You need new leadership and management in this organization. Because it's almost as if they don't know any other path than the one they've walked like they hired Sean Payton and had that great draft class in 06 and obviously drafted or signed Drew Brees but they don't know any other way and if you just keep trying to reinvent or recreate the success you had you're going to keep failing. And we're seeing it right now. And everybody, literally everybody can see it. Everyone that's a fan of this organization, everyone that covers the NFL, everyone that watches casually can see it. But it's almost like the management within this organization are just, they keep driving this thing into the ground. So, look, man. Um, last week I was pissed. I didn't expect the Saints to beat the Lions, and they didn't. But I sure didn't expect them to be down 21 nothing after seven minutes into the ball game. Uh, they've quit on Dennis Allen. Um, you got to fire Dennis. You got to fire P. Carmichael. You can promote Curry. Um, find whoever is the coach on that staff that has – the players respect whoever the coach is on staff that has the players respect promote that man to interim play out the string and then you go figure it out in the offseason you find your head coach you draft a quarterback and you start this rebuild I'm not going to sit here and yell and curse and rant today. Last week was the time for that because you you had a game against Atlanta that was inherently winnable coming off the bye, and with that, you could have taken command of your division. And instead, you pissed it away. Um, So it's what it is, man. You lost again. 
<laughs> I'm doing this right now, so I don't know if the, I'm sure the Atlanta, I don't know if the Atlanta game's gone final. Someone posted in the comments that the Jets had the ball when I left the house and they were driving to try to go for the game winner, but I don't know if they got it. Um, you know, next week you get to play Carolina, and that may be your last win of the season. You do get to play the Giants, but you got to play the Bucks and the Falcons too. Um, Falcons won, thank you. So, so now you've you're essentially two games behind Atlanta in the division. You do get to play them again at home, but. You know, anything short of Dennis Allen being fired tomorrow is going to be a disappointment. Bye. Um, because if watching how they came out today after losing to Bye. Atlanta last week, needing some Daddy. desperation, Daddy. and coming out the way they did, Daddy. lifeless, Daddy. that's a reflection Daddy. on Bye. this team's complete and total lack of respect for their head coach. It's... I've used the analogy a bunch, but y'all, it's the substitute teacher mentality. It's what he is. So they may like their coach, but they don't respect him. So, all right, y'all. Take Drew and go walk around the mall. Think about life a little bit. Think about how much a four-team college football playoff sucks and how excited I am for next year. Think about being in New York this weekend for uh, for Jaden winning the Heisman, which is going to be awesome. Going to think positive thoughts and good things, and um, hope that Mrs. Benson uh, tomorrow does the right thing and uh, and fires Dennis Allen because it's time. All right, smash that like button. Y'all have a great day. By the way, Hudco Roofing, HudcoRoofing.com. If you need a roof, let us help you out. Hudco Roofing, HudcoRoofing.com. Give us a who dat. Give us a who dat. Who dat. There we go. See y'all. <laughs>